So hi everyone, as you just heard, my name is Natalie and uh, the project I did is an honors thesis in the College of Arts and Sciences and the Linguistics part Department here. Um, and the title of my thesis is Does Morphology Compensate for Variable Phonology? A Case Study of Spanish Subject Pronoun Use in the Context of s -Lenition. And I know that's a really long and complicated title that probably doesn't mean much if you aren't familiar with linguistics or Spanish. But my main goal is most basically to show you something about language during this talk. So I'm going to begin by breaking down three important concepts for you. And those are s -lenition, Spanish subject pronoun use, and functionalism. So first, s -lenition refers to the reduction of the sound s to something that sounds more like an H or nothing at all. In other words, the sound can be completely deleted. So for example, the word mismo can be pronounced just as I did with a strong S sound, mismo, but can also be pronounced more like mismo or mimo with the reduced and deleted forms respectively. And this occurs across the dialects of Spanish. And the map on the slide here shows you those geographic regions in red, which most frequently reduce S just to contextualize the group of speakers that we're talking about for you. And those in the Caribbean dialect group specifically, for example, speakers from the Puerto Rico or the DR have um, the highest rates of S reduction and deletion out of these groups. Uh, and social factors such as regional origin are what we consider to be language external factors that affect language variation. But the expression of S is also shaped by what we call language internal features, which are things like whether an S occurs syllable initially or finally, whether it occurs in an unstressed position, or even if the S is followed by a consonant versus a vowel. And so if you speak a dialect of Spanish that does not frequently reduce S, you might be thinking to yourself right now, this is why I have a hard time understanding speakers of this or that dialect because they don't pronounce S like I do. And S reduction is one of many features of Spanish that distinguish these dialects and the perception of them across Spanish speakers. And so now I'll talk a little bit about Spanish subject pronoun use. Uh, pronouns are generally optional in Spanish. So for example, tu hablas and hablas alone both mean you talk in English. So the same meaning is conveyed with or without the pronoun present. And language uh, and pronoun use like S reduction is also shaped by various social factors and language internal factors. Uh, and pronouns are also used at higher rates in the Caribbean dialect group than in other groups. And so now what's functionalism? A functional hypothesis generally predicts that certain patterns in language are motivated by their ability to facilitate communication. This idea is similar to the notion of Darwinian evolution through natural selection. In biology, characteristics which help survival and reproduction are more likely to be selected for. And in language, characteristics which would make communication easier and clearer would be more likely to be selected. So with certain losses of information caused by language change and variation, languages can adjust to preserve that information. So what happens when important information conveyed by a verb in Spanish is lost when S deletion occurs? An example of this can be seen on the slide here with the S in hablas being deleted to make the verb habla in the present tense, which is identical to the third person singular form of that verb. And when the S is deleted in the imperfect tense here, the second person singular form is identical not only to the third person singular, but also to the first person singular. They're all pronounced hablaba. A functional hypothesis would predict that a pronoun would be more likely to be used in such instances of deletion to retain the important information about person and number. With the example of the first person plural of hablamos in the present and hablábamos in the imperfect, that is not the case because even when S is deleted and hablamos becomes hablamo and hablábamos becomes hablábamo, it is still phonetically distinct from all other verb forms conveying the meaning of different persons. So no information is lost when S deletion occurs. So the aim of my study was to find a significant relationship between the increased rates of pronoun use and S deletion in Caribbean dialects based on this distinction I just described between second person singular and first person plural verb forms in Spanish. To do this, I analyzed the speech of seven male Spanish speakers of Caribbean origin. I first gathered general syllable final S data from these speakers to see if their S expressions were typical for their dialect group. And this involved going through transcribed interviews and finding places where an S was or could have been used and recording information about it, such as if it was deleted or not, and what its linguistic environment was, which basically just means I recorded information about those language internal features I talked about earlier. 
Uh, and from there, I also gathered additional S data that was specifically a part of verb endings for second person singular and first person plural verbs. So those S's like those on hablas and hablamos. And I recorded the same type of information about the linguistic factors as I did for the general S data, and additionally noted whether or not a pronoun was used with that verb. From there, I carried out a bunch of statistical tests to see which linguistic factors had a significant effect on S expression and which did not and also to see which variables were the strongest predictors of S deletion. So the predictor variables included in the analyses were word position, following sound, stress, morphological category, word length, lexical frequency, and speech rate, which are all just predictor variables that have been shown by previous studies to influence the expression of S. And then I also included pronoun presence as a factor when considering the verbal data. On the slide here are some graphs that show the trends for general S deletion in this group of speakers. The red line on the bar plots is set at 0.49 and represents the overall proportion of deletion. So syllable final S was deleted about 49% of the time for this group of speakers. A summary of the trend shown on these graphs is that syllable final S was more likely to be deleted when it was word final, when it was followed by a consonant, when it occurred in an unstressed syllable, when it was a plural S, when it occurred in faster paced speech and when it was a part of a longer word. This result is typical for the Caribbean dialect group and I included this here to give you an idea about how these predictor variables generally affect the expression of S in Spanish. And so now these next two graphs demonstrate the effect of pronoun use on S deletion for the second person singular and the first person plural verb forms, which is the meat of my study per se. Uh, the red line on the second person singular graph is set at 0.56 and the one on the first person plural at 0.65, again representing the respective proportions of S deletion for those verb forms. The, for the second person singular, when a pronoun is absent, S is much less likely to be deleted when it is when, than when it is present. The same trend is visible on the graph for the first person plural data, but you can see that that distinction is not nearly as strong. And when statistical analyses were carried out on each of these data sets to test the predictive power of pronoun presence on S deletion, it was found that pronoun presence was the strongest predictor of S deletion for the second person singular form, but that it was not a significant predictor of S deletion at all for the first person plural. This result is taken as evidence in support of the relationship between the high rates of S deletion and pronoun presence in the Caribbean dialects and in support of the idea of functional compensation to preserve important information. So now you might be wondering what this all means. What are the implications of this study? Uh, and basically, uh, specific to Spanish, these results provide more insight into the motivations behind the variation of these specific linguistic phenomena, uh, but they also bolster support for functionalism as a line of linguistic inquiry capable of providing a better understanding of human language in general. But I started this talk saying I was going to show you something about language. People are always maximizing their efficiency. We created remotes so we could change the channel and the volume on our TV without getting up. We have machines that slice our bread for us. And we even use straws to drink out of cups so we don't have to pick them up. But even with our efficient nature, we still need to retain function. And so our use of language adapts to cuts made for the sake of efficiency because we still want to and need to be understood. Our use of language needs not only to be efficient, but to remain functional. Um, so thank you for listening to my presentation, and I'd be happy to answer any questions any of you might have.